let's talk about some, some real estate investing uh, real quick. Christy, I, I know you've fixed and flipped a bunch of homes over your career, but you have this one story uh, with a multifamily purchased in uh, Dillon, South Carolina. Oh, I know that. Right. Right. Oh, God. So, <laughs> give us the 30,000 foot. <laughs> the start and the current situation in that place. Oh, I don't know if we actually have time for this story, but I'll do my best to, um, to keep it short. So I bought this property. It was 50% occupied. It was a total disaster. I mean, it wasn't the units that weren't occupied, weren't habitable. So, um, I bought it with the understanding that I was going to fix it up and rent it. And I bought it at auction numbers made all kinds of sense i have done a lot of construction i've run my own crews so i wasn't worried about the the fix-up part but i had no idea what i was getting myself into with the community part um because the uh the property manager that i met with was the current property manager but little did i know that the property manager before her was actually a gang leader and he put all of his gang members in the property and they basically ran it as like this like criminal like playground for criminal activity and um and so uh once we once i started well actually the day that i bought it there was a sh there was a murder on the property somebody got shot and killed and um so it was friday the 13th too which i mean right. Could you imagine? Um, and that same day, my mom actually went to the hospital uh, by ambulance with no pulse. So it was like a wonderful, it was a great day. It was like oh, the worst day of my life. Um, but anyway, so then, you know, we're trying to kick these people out. COVID hits. We've got eviction moratoriums. I'm trying to get all these gang members off the property. We have cameras installed. We see everything that's going on with like gun deals. The cops are involved. The, the, that's why like none of this stuff was showing up in like crime reports because the cops were literally being paid by all the gang leaders, by the gang oh. members. Um, so as we're kicking people out, we got threatened. Our lives got threatened. Um, there was a video that we have of the guys. There's like 30 guys with AK-47s and AR-15s threatening my mom and I because we're kicking them out. And my mom like didn't even care. She was like, I, "No, you don't scare me." I, I, <laughs> this, this woman is the OG. So anyway, so um, so we're fixing the places up. We're dealing with dirty cops. Um, you know, they're not like nine one one doesn't work in that neighborhood. They were not doing anything. They were not coming when we would call. They weren't helping us with evictions. They weren't helping us with the crimes. So we just like took the matters in our own hands. And just started doing things that I may or may not be able to talk about on this show to get people out. Um, we evicted 30 people, um, all of whom we had some level doing criminal activity. We had to, we built relationships with the magistrate. Um, and, um, and then we had a building burned down. We had a, a 12 buildings, now we have 11. One of them burned to the ground. Wow. And that was Good right after... Uh, yeah, right after we had just finished all of the fix ups and the place was running great, and we were super happy. We got through the whole gang thing and all that stuff. And um, but I mean, today, um, so the cops used to show up four times a day or get called four times a day. They haven't been there. I don't know, probably six months. They haven't been there in like six months. That's amazing. Um, we you know, we have security. We got a security gate. We have cameras. Um, it's mostly single women with children that live there. Everybody has passed background checks. Um, we have a new property manager that isn't prostituting on the property for Coke, like the last one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need a side gig. <laughs> even, even with that building burning down, which was the biggest building that we had, we increased our rent roll by, I just looked at it this morning, actually, by... Um, by 23,000, wow. um, we increased our collections because uh, we actually started charging, you know, rubs and, and you know, all kinds of other fees and stuff. Um, and that got increased by uh, 29,000. So wow. we are just rocking and rolling like people don't. It got to the point where we were sending out our numbers to brokers um, to sell it and they didn't believe us. They didn't believe like our collections are at 97%. Whereas most of the other buildings in that area are down 25, 30%. Um, you know, like they truly didn't, they thought we were fudging our numbers, which is like not what we do. So, um, 
it's been a little, it's been a crazy ride. I mean, it's, um, but you know, Bill, I have to give Bill a lot of credit because when I was in the middle of all of that, like literally, I think the building had just burned down and um, we had a dumpster fire that same day. I mean, it was some crazy, it was somebody breaking in, trying to light the other place on fire. It was ridiculous. And he's like, well, it sounds like you're all almost on the other side. Just keep going. And I'm like, I'm quitting. I'm out. I can't do this anymore. I'm really done. Um, but when he's told me that, you know what, I just like, I was like, you know what, I should, I just, just keep going. Like he's right. We're almost on the other side. We just gotta, we, and you know, we just kicked everybody out. Like we've got to see this thing through. And, you know, we had a mission when we started to be able to provide, you know, safe and clean housing for, you know, people in the lower income brackets. We don't have very many HUD people. We only have 5% HUD. So they're all working class people and they deserve, decent housing. So, um, you know, we had a mission and, um, we wanted to quit almost on a daily basis, but we didn't. And my mom and I worked together and it was like, we just laughed on I mean, cause we were just like, you can't even make this stuff up. Like it was just, <laughs> it was so ridiculous. Um, That's amazing. so yeah, we have it under contract now, um, for a, for a profit, which is also amazing. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wow. been, it's been quite the journey. That's amazing. I was I was thinking about your mom as part of those threats, and she doesn't care. And she's like, "You just wait till I get out of back surgery. I'm going to come back and kick your ass." <laughs> I know. Like she literally. So everybody on the property was packing except for her, and she was literally just went up to the, one of the guys and was just like, "You don't scare me, but if you mess with my daughter, you're going to have a bad day." <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, mom, you don't talk to people like that. Like, literally, yeah. these are like people that kill people. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy.